Welcome to Wargamer Land Battle. This game was developed and published by Eugene Systems in 2013. Now you might wonder why am I playing such an old game? I'm playing it because I love the campaign. The campaign is really good. So, um, it contains three campaigns. This first one is basically a tutorial, but the other ones are actual campaigns. And today I am going to be playing Fortress Oslo, which is the simplest one. During two weeks of fierce fighting, the packed forces have crushed the defenses that NATO established in Scandinavia. Sweden, Norway and Denmark have been forced to surrender, which represents a total victory for the Soviets and their allies on the Northern Front. But the situation in Germany has developed in a diametrically opposite direction. The Pact forces have been halted there and then repelled by NATO counteroffensive, incurring heavy losses. Under pressure from public opinion in the West, NATO High Command has resolved to di dispatch some elements to the north to liberate Denmark and Norway. Exhausted by their first victorious campaign, will the Pact forces occupying Scandinavia be able to hold their position long enough to allow their high command to send reinforcements to the front? So, um, I can only play this campaign as NATO. If you play the game in multiplayer, one player can take one side and one player can take the other. But it's not possible to play the other side in single player, probably because Eugene didn't want to script both sides. Uh, the scenario slightly favors NATO. Um, I can turn the AI up to very hard, which will mostly give it god vision over the map. And yeah, so every day is, I think, a turn, so we have to win this in 12 turns. Alright, let's jump in. Finlandization. A week after, after a week of political cri uh, crisis, the Finnish Prime Minister has resigned and transferred power to a pro-communist administration. This is enabling the USSR to redeploy troops in Scandinavia that will monitor this unstable neighbor. So... I think this just means that the opposing side gets more, more availability of divisions. I'm gonna take the first infantry brigade and send them straight to Aarhus, which is probably gonna be our first battle. And then I'm going to deploy the Commando Brigade, which are, well, they're good at city fighting and maybe forests and pretty bad at everything else. So I'm going to drop them in Copenhagen. Copenhagen is one of our uh, important objectives. And after that, they might go to Malmo or they might just stay here. Because they're not going to do very well in the more open ground north of that. But in Copenhagen they should do just fine. Alright, I can deploy some strikes. Let's see, I've got a naval bombardment, but that's going to take 10 political points. I can do some aerial cover. Yeah, it's kind of important that uh, the infantry brigade arrives in so I'm going to do aerial cover over kill. Alright, that should be it for uh, for these orders. Uh, let's get into battle. Alright, and we are met by the 9th Motorschützen Regiment. Let's see what they're equipped with. So they got a lot of BMP 2s, some BMP 1s, all with tow missiles on top of them. Strellas, uh, Motorschützen, Panzerjägers, Pioneers, uh, 
and some special forces in helicopters. Um, logistical support. Let's see. Oh yeah. These things are kind of annoying because they spam you with rockets and the AI loves to do it. Uh, decent anti-air. Not that great tanks though, so I'm probably going to be leaning on my tanks if I can keep them away from the tow missiles. Okay. Now I gotta decide where everybody goes. I will bring you back when I've done that because that's kind of boring. Alright, and we're back. So I've got a small group to go over here. I've got some tanks and a recon vehicle and some strikers to hold this flank. Some troops to go into these buildings. Maybe they can shoot something in, in this direction. And then the main initial force is going to go into these buildings with the support of these armored vehicles and another support group to provide some anti-air. Uh, I've got more anti-air here because the AI loves to spam you with aircraft. And that should do. From my experience, if I go here, the AI will try to form a line here and we might be able to hit them with the mortars. Otherwise, these mortars will provide some general support, so they should be useful either way. Alright, let's go. Now, contrary to Steel Division, which is the newer Yugen game, you cannot give orders before the battle starts. So, what you have to do at the start is spam out a lot of orders really quickly before you get rushed. Starting to look like we're gonna need more infantry here. Oh, I forgot about these guys. They need to also. Because all of this is not gonna do much without any support weapons now. Uh, let's use the mortars to bring these guys the good news. And hopefully, slow them down, but they don't appear to be doing very much anyway. And we can use some extra infantry down here. They seem to not care very much about our mortars.
Oh, that was an attacking as well, I shouldn't have dodged that. Let's see, how far away is that helicopter? Some supplies up in there. These guys need to be better spaced out. Like they're moving out. Just gotta take a look at these guys. Yes, they definitely are. Let's hit them. Okay, there comes the air force. Get him. Did he get his bombs off? No, but he... Oh, he did. Damn it. He did manage to crash an airplane onto my AA. Oh, there's another one. Got him. I think he managed to bomb my challenger. That's what I get for bringing such an expensive uh, tank to this fight, necessarily. Although, I think I'm actually gonna bring another one, but just keep it back here. some more chieftains and maybe we can make a push onto this place if we can take care of the Soviet Air Force of course okay uh, more helicopters coming in See if Mr. Javelin can have something to say about that. Oh, bolt. Get out. Uh, you need to be behind the buildings. There's a lot of stuff in a short time. Are you talking to me? A 
Let's see if Mr. Challenger can slow them down. Come on. Of course, mm, looks like this is going to be a bit of a knife fight. Challenger a long way around because I really don't want to lose that thing. Calling to the chieftains. Keep you guys can retreat. Uh, too late. It's unfortunate. Strike. Move it. Okay, what's the situation? Another one. Back away from the ATGMs. You need to get out of here. You need to move forward. You need to move up. Are you talking to me? That's a little bit much idea. ATGM fire for my liking. your computer is messed up. Alts, get back, ouch. Okay, more mortar fire on that place. Um, oh. I don't think so, buddy. And that wins us the battle, actually. Once you got enough kills, the opposing force retreats. Alright, so... The North Korean mobilization. The sound of boots from Pyongyang does not bode well. The Pentagon is planning to send the second or 101st Airborne to Southeast Asia, although it was initially destined for Scandinavia. So I can accept and then I gain 20 political points, or I can say I need this unit and then I keep them, but I don't get political points. So I'm going to accept. Weather report. Clouds are forming off the Baltic Sea and the worsening conditions could disrupt enemy information. Okay. NATO takes Copenhagen. We've had to take Copenhagen in order to continue our offensive. This victory gains us a raise of 50 morale points as long as we have the upper hand in the city. So. Uh, you got morale points when you manage to get your morale full I think you win the campaign 
And because Copenhagen is an objective, we get 50 morale points. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the first day. And this video, I will see you on the next day.